if we can move around here and uh, showcase the better parts. Unfortunately, I should have mapped my. I should have mapped my. Oh crap! I should have mapped my my trip today last night. That way, I think it would have been far much more interesting. So it's going to be all over the place, like I said. I do apologize for that. But all right. So a friend of mine I was, I was talking about, I think, got his, his piece of land at uh, almost, could be wrong here, but almost 150 or something, and that was more than 10 years ago. So I would like to think people that are reselling land that they bought a while back are probably selling it somewhere in the region of maybe 200, maybe 300, or even 400,000 uh, quarts, right? So. basketball court wow it's hot today
here again. So the, uh, I, I live uh, I live close to what you might call a high density area, right? Um, uh, it's cold in Mobe, and uh, occasionally yeah, I I go incognito, and, and unfortunately I don't have a, um, a camera right now that's small enough to uh, to hide somewhere in my pocket or something. But anyway. So I go incognito and I move around a lot and, and if you were to see the things that I see um, when I do do that, you'd think you're in a completely different world, right? Um, in actual fact, I mean, yeah, literally in the same city. So again, I'm trying to latch on to what I was saying earlier um, about uh, the massive gap that exists between uh, people that have resources or money um, and individuals that don't have resources. Um, not sure if people actually care a lot about that, but uh, uh, I, at some point in my previous life, I found myself, there we go, let's see what's here. I, my past life, I, I, um, I lived in a country where there's, there's even a worse of uh, inequality gap, right? So I, I spent some seven years in, um, in South Africa, in Cape Town, actually, and and actually quite sad, right? So in the process, anyways, I I developed this interest of just trying to understand um, what I see, uh, what I see in Zambia, right? What I see in Lusaka. Let's see what's here. All right, doesn't look like there's anything interesting, but come back here. On a, on a related note, a few a few weeks ago, I um, I was attending a, a funeral, and, uh, and so the person who died had to be buried in uh, one of the villages in the eastern part of the country. And <laughs> the situation is actually much much worse than, than the so-called high density areas that you find in Osaka, right? Uh, oh, this looks nice. We left. Good stuff. thing is uh, this is a relatively new area and so there's there's only small oh Mumba Villa wow there's only uh, small bits or small portions of roads that have been uh, that have been paved and it's it's mostly the main roads really um, which which explains why I'm I'm driving through this gravel road at the moment uh, and it turns out that uh, most of the places that are worth seeing around this area um, are located in stretches such as the one I'm driving through. So I do apologize if if this footage is shaking uh, or if the view is not as appealing. Right? But I'm guessing five, ten years from now, all this is going to change. The funny thing is, uh, this other um, Minwood is it Minwood? Uh, Minwood suburbs are not as pristine as uh, as Minwood Ibex. Um, I normally cycle cycle around uh, Minwood Kwamwen a lot, and it's a, it's a relatively older location in comparison to Minwood Ibex. But but the roads are not paved there, uh, so all right. Let's see what's on the other side here. We'll come back here. One time when I, I, I went to Minu Bundeke, I was, uh, I was pretty impressed though. Um, at least there's, uh, there appears to be a couple of things going on, a couple of things they're doing right in this uh, so-called Minu Bundeke area. 